I'm managing my stock portfolio the same way that Robert Kraft is managing his business, and his business is the New England Patriots. Was Robert happy that uh, Tom Brady, his quarterback of last year, went to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl for Tampa Bay while he sat in a box watching his ex-quarterback take this team to the Super Bowl champions while his team didn't even make the playoffs, no, Robert wasn't happy about that, not not any more happy than I am to see my portfolio down 15%. But Robert manages his team, the New England Patriots, for the future, not for today, not for next week. He's not a swing trader. He's not a day trader. He's an investor. He has an, a business, a multi-billion dollar business called the New England Patriots, and he knows his fans will show up this year, even though he doesn't make it, and he knows that he is investing more in free agency this year than he ever has buying in, um, uh, offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and he's out building his team, not for today, he's not a swing trader, he's not a day trader, not for today, but for the future. And that's how I manage my portfolio. And I want to give you some parallels as to what I saw happen with the New England Patriots and what I see happening in the New England Patriots as they go into this draft and come after Alabama's uh, past quarterback, Mac Jones, to replace Tom Brady, to be with the other top talent that he is buying and, and bringing on to the team so that his team can be a team of the future. My portfolio is a portfolio of the future. And I want to explain to you how I got it there, what it's made of, and how I'm reacting to the current situation I find myself in. So stay with me. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of uh, Best of Us Investors. We're a tribe. We're a team of, of individuals who have a like common interest, and that is to make good investment decisions, not be swing traders, to uh, learn our tax code so that we keep more of what we make, and number three, to build family wealth. So that's our goals, and we manage our portfolios similar to the New England Patriots to be the winners, not this year, not next year, but the future. And for a long time in the future, we're picking the companies that are going to be the growth engines of our economy in the future. Stay with me. I'll go into it in more detail. And while I'm gone, subscribe, hit that like button, and then send this this video to all your friends who want to become wealthy. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, first of all, why, why did we not go to the Super Bowl last month and this month? Well, because of fear. Because of fear of a value, a increasing value of the dollar, because of fear of inflation, because fear of national debt. And that fear manifested itself in a exit from the, the, the big winners of the uh, past year, and that was tech. So that fear is our loss of, of Tom Brady. It is, it is equivalent to Robert Kraft's not being at the Super Bowl to cheer his team on, but instead to cheer his ex-quarterback on. Not a comfortable feeling. I, 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 I empathize with him. It hasn't been comfortable for me the last couple of weeks. So what do I do to make myself comfortable, to keep my unwanted roommate from screaming at me, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Get out of those stocks. I read. I go and I read this. I read this. This is The Future is Faster Than You Think. It is a book that basically opened a window for me. Actually, it, it parted the curtain so I could see into the future and understand what's going to happen. Understand the electronic vehicle world. Understand the, the education world of the future. Understand that there are, let me give you this tidbit, tidbit, and you think about what you can do with it. For the first time in the history of mankind, 
there are more grandparents than there are grandchildren. What the hell does that mean, Carrie? What does that have to do with anything? It has to do with demographics. That there are going to be more elderly people. There are actually 10,000 people turning 65 every day in the United States. And the following generation isn't having that many babies. So we have a situation. To, to fast forward what this might look like, go study the demographics of Japan. Japan has an elder problem. They don't have enough workers. They don't have enough caregivers. What does that mean? They need robots. Yeah, they need robots to replace the caregivers for their aging population. They have a population that is approaching the 80s with rapid fire. Well, what happens when people get into their 80s? Their health diminishes and they need caregivers, but they don't have any caregivers. They don't have any grandchildren. They don't have any, they have been had strict policies on immigration. So they don't have them. So go look into robotics and go look to um, Georgia Tech and find the picture. I'll show you a picture of her. She's a magnificent looking woman. But guess what? She's a robot. She's designed by a Japanese firm, uh, Georgia Tech is helping them, to provide Japan, which also is going to be a problem in England, which is also going to be a problem in Germany, because they, and, and in China, China is the huge problem. You remember that China had a one-child policy from 1975 through, I think it was 2015. They don't have enough young people to take care of their aging population. So in here, I learn about robots. I learn about this also in the book I'm currently reading, The Industries of the Future. So I invest in robots. I also know that <clears throat> we discovered this last year that our supply chain is broken. The parts we need for our cars are made in, in China. The, 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 the pharmaceuticals we need to keep us healthy are made in China. We don't have that manufacturing in the United States. So how are we going to get it back? Well, we can't compete with labor. We can compete with robots. How about that? How about for parts? We, we change and we move to 3D printing. It, we no longer need those iron uh, uh, foundries that are in downtown Birmingham and the steel factories that are out in Fairfield. We don't need them anymore. We can take resins and put an adhesive to it and 3D print those parts a lot cheaper and it's done by a robot. Okay, so why, what is, why am I invested here? Because I'm not trying to win the Super Bowl tomorrow. I'm not trying to win it next week. I'm investing like Robert Kraft in the future because I know what the future looks like. And so what I do, I don't go out and buy, I do own Amazon and Google and Apple because they're probably going to be the buyers of the companies I'm buying down here at a dollar or five dollars because I want a 10x growth. I'm not going to get a 10x growth out of Amazon. I'm not. I'm, I, I might get a 20% a year grow but or, or 15, but I'm not going to get a 10x. I'm not going to have the likelihood if I can read and understand what's happening in the future and then tap into my my source of 18,000 people that I've built who feed me information from their knowledge base and say, look at this company, Carrie, this is a robotic company or a 3D company or uh, a, an EV company that I think is going to be a big player. And then I take those, all that information that these 18,000 people are giving me and I feed it to my investment committee. This is a committee of five people that work for inside my Discord to analyze the stocks that the 18,000 people are feeding them to do the due diligence and to come up with which are the exponential growth uh, potential in the areas we want to, to invest in. And the number one area that we want to invest in is medicine. And that has to do with genome sequencing, with CRISPR, with, with uh, CRISPR therapies, because 
the most event, important event that has happened in your life. I don't care if you're two years old or you're 92 years old. The most important event that has happened in your life started a year ago, and that was the coronavirus. And much like after World War II, the leaders of the world are going to get together and say, this can never happen again. We cannot allow our economies to come to their knees because of a virus. And there will be another virus, and we aren't done with this virus yet. So we are going to t take all the technology, all the knowledge, all the money we can muster as a world, as a earth, as a planet, and make sure this never happens again. And you, as a Robert Kraft and a Cary Grinkmeyer, need to figure out who are my main players. Who's going to be my quarterback? Who's going to be my defensive lineman? Who's going to be my defensive backs? And in my world, that's biotech. My, my, my quarterback is called biotech. My defensive lineman is called 3D printing. My wide receiver is, is called um, robotics. And then, and then my, my, my running back is called autonomous vehicles. Not electric vehicles, no. That's a step into the future. That's the next step, the electronic vehicle. The future is autonomous. The future is I pick up my phone and there's a car out there and it takes me where I want to go. The future is I buy a uh, $45,000 Tesla. I park it in my garage. I will only use it 5% of my life, 5% of my waking hours during the day. But the other hours, Elon or Uber, whichever we work, has the right to raise my garage door, take my car out, go out to the airport, pick somebody up, charge them $30 to get it, and I get 15 of that $30. And then the car goes and does it again. And so while I'm asleep, I have a side gig. I'm not an Uber driver. I have an Uber car. All my responsibility is to take care of that car, to keep it clean, maybe to put water bottles in the, in the receptacles. So that people say, I want Carrie's car. Wow, are you kidding, Carrie? That's what's going to be in the future? I can have a side gig and I'm not as an Uber driver, but a, no, as an Uber car or a Tesla car. Yeah, yeah, it's in the book. I'm not a genius. I just read. I just study. So am I upset that I'm 15% down in my portfolio? Yeah, yeah. And Robert Kraft was upset when he left the Super Bowl this last January and his ex-quarterback won somebody else the big prize. And he got on his private plane and went home. But then he developed and continued to develop his plan, not for tomorrow, not for next week. He's not a swing trader. He's not a day trader. He's a businessman. He's an investor. And he's got a hell of a product. And in the meantime, he still fills the stands and he still participates in the NFL's new $100 billion advertising contract. So we're in the driver's seat. We know what's going to happen. If you'd like to be a part of this, if you'd like to be a part of the people, the 18,000 people uh, go to bestofusinvestors.com and uh, give me your name and your email address and I'll send you a link to our Discord and then you can come over there and you can participate th in this. We're going to have, within the next month, every, every week we're going to have our investment committee is going to give you a video, uh, probably about a five-minute video and it's only going to be available to our, our, our Discord members of the stocks that the 18,000 growing to 25,000, growing to 50,000, growing to 100,000 eyes, ears, and noses send us information about the stocks that we think we want to be in. And then we feed it to a talented team of analysts and they feed us back the due diligence that we need to do what? What do we need to do? We need to make good investment decisions based on fact, not based on emotion. 
we don't want to buy Lordstown and we don't want to buy Nicola and we don't want to buy Workhorse or Clover. Come on. You didn't know what you were buying when you bought those, but now you know what you got. So get the information you need that you don't have the time and the skills and give it to be a part of this. Okay. Um, I'm Terry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I've been doing this for years. Um, now though, I've got time to read and educate myself and organize a group of people that are going to help me, I guess, build family wealth, pass my $24 million, Nita and I, on to our heirs and make a difference in their lives. I want to make a difference in your life. So come join me and I'll see you again tomorrow.